Hello everyone, and thank you for watching another video brought to you by International Key Supply. In this video, we're going to show you the software installation for the AK90 BMW EWS key programming device, uh, along with the actual demonstration of that same device. So when you purchase this AK90 from us at International Key Supply, in the box along with the main unit, you're going to receive a couple of cables and a CD. On that CD is the software for the AK90. So today we're showing you how to install this software on a Windows 7 PC. The reason that we have used Windows 7 is it is much more stable uh, to use Windows 7 with AK90 than it would be to use Windows 10. It's not that Windows 10 can't work with AK90, but it's very difficult to get it set up and it's even more difficult to keep it working. So our recommendation to you would be if you want the AK90 installation to go smoothly and to be trouble free and to continue to operate for you time and time again, use a Windows 7 operating system. So I have the CD loaded in this computer already and I'm gonna browse to it and uh, your computer may be set up differently than mine so you may have to browse to it differently but basically we're trying to get to the CD drive of the computer and once you open the contents of that drive, you'll see that there's several folders in here and multiple files, uh, programs, excuse me. You're going to click on AK90 3.1 to open the folder and expand the contents. And then you're going to double click on this setup application here. Okay, so at this point, we do not have the AK90 connected to the PC. We're doing the software installation first. And depending upon the speed of your PC, this could take a little bit of time. <clears throat> so we're just going to wait for this startup program. You get some warnings here. You're going to click Next to get through the warnings. <clears throat> You're going to tell it, yes, it's okay to proceed, and you accept the software license. And you can put your information in here if you like. It's totally up to you. Um, you don't have to, but you can. What's important in the serial number field, you just type the number one and then click next. And then if you see here, this is where the software will be installed on your computer. It's good to take note of this because the drivers don't always install automatically and sometimes you need to manually install the drivers. So if you take note of where your PC is installing the software, it'll be easier for you to find the drivers later on. <clears throat> so on this computer, you see program files, x86, HRT, AK90. So keep that in mind. Your computer might be different, but it is gonna be good to know that if the drivers don't automatically install. We're going to click on Next. We're going to leave it at a typical installation, and that would be our recommendation as you leave it on typical. Click Next again, and then uh, the software is asking you in what program folder you'd like to find the AK90 software. You can choose whatever folder you want on your Start menu. We're just going to leave it in the program folders how it is here. And we're going to let the installation run. Okay, so once you've finished, the program is finished installing, you're going to get this pop-up, you're going to click on Finish. So at this point, you're now going to see a icon on your desktop for the AK90 software. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the USB cable to the AK90 device here. And we're going to see if this, the driver is automatically installed or not. So what we'll do here is we will start the software. And as you see, the hardware was found automatically and connected. Uh, I hope you're able to hear that um, several beeps that the AK90 emitted. That tells you that the uh, AK90 is connected to the software and ready to operate. Now, if you would have connected your AK90 and you didn't have successful communication with the software and the hardware, what you would have done is, I'll demonstrate it to you, you would have got a warning message that would have popped up here on the screen, and most likely the program would have closed immediately after the warning, which it would have been too quick for you to probably even read it. 
and that's okay that that happens so if the software closed itself great if it didn't close you would close it and then you're going to go to that location on your computer where the ak90 software was installed so if you remember on this computer it was the c drive it was under program files x86 it was under hrt and then ak90 and once you get into this folder here, the AK90 folder, you'll see this subfolder called DRV, which is also the driver folder. Open it up, and you see this application here. You'll double click on this application, and that will manually install the drivers. Something else I want to note, before you manually install the drivers, I'd recommend that you disconnect the AK90 from your PC, and then you can manually install the drivers. We're going to go ahead and go through that process here, even though it's not necessary. It's not going to hurt anything, but I'd like you to see how it works. Double click on the application here and then click yes to proceed. <clears throat> the driver installation will proceed here. Has a couple of steps. You click next. You agree to the license. Click next and then let it install wherever it wants to install the software. Do not change this destination. Next, and then confirm the installation. And this will take just a moment. <clears throat> the drivers typically take a little bit longer to install than the software. And like I said, don't be alarmed if it takes some time for this, the drivers to install. This is pretty normal. And again, we're only going through this process if your AK90 drivers did not automatically install when you installed the software. This is an alternate installation setup in case those drivers didn't automatically install. Okay, so you're gonna click finish here. And then you've got another pop-up, install. So now what's happening is the secondary driver installation software is running and it's looking to see if you have any previous versions of this driver on your PC. Um, this is um, a semi-universal driver for a lot of these um, level converters that we see in programmers. So you may find that there are additional drivers of the same type on your PC. And if you do, the software is going to warn you, what do you want to do? And typically you would tell it to go ahead and install a new instance of this driver. That way, whatever was using the driver that it found is going to be unaffected. Okay, so we got installation completed successfully. We click OK. And then as you see, all the driver softwares have now closed. So we're going to X out of here. And we're going to, again, hook the AK-90 up to the PC. I'm going to start the AK-90 software. Okay, so the hardware and software are now connected properly. Uh, if for some reason they didn't connect automatically, you could click on this connect button here and would do the same thing. It would go out and look for the AK-90, and then when you have communication between the programmer and the software, you get those few beeps, and you know you're ready to go. So in this example here, we're going to read an EWS3 module, and we've already taken it out of the housing. So here's what it looks like out of the housing. This is the target device right here, this large MCU. And so what we're going to do is we're going to verify the mask on here because we only want to read a mask of 0D46J. If we have another mask, we don't want to read it because we will corrupt the data. The AK-90 also warns us of this. 
So this process is going to start with removing this module from the housing and cleaning all the legs around this processor very, very well. Because if we don't get the legs cleaned properly, we're not going to get a good connection and we're not going to be able to uh, read the data. So at this point, what I want to show you is on the PC screen, if you see here, there's an icon that says EWS Picture. You click on EWS Picture and it's telling you about here's the mask and here is how to line up the adapter. So on your um, adapter, the socket here, you're going to see a red dot and you're going to want to align that red dot with the top of this processor here that's marked. So here is where it's marked. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is actually a circle, uh, an indent on the corner of this uh, device telling us where pin one is. So this is where the socket is going to align. And this is the dot that they're showing you in the picture. So we're going to put it on the EWS module like this. And then we're going to connect the programmer to the, excuse me, connect the cable to the programmer and make sure everything is securely in place. It's going to look something like this. We're going to close out of this picture. And we're going to go back here and we're going to click on read EWS. And now here's this warning. And it's a little bit maybe hard to understand, but what it's telling you is that if you have a mask of 2D47J, do not read that memory device. The data will get corrupted. And when the data gets corrupted, you're going to real mess on your hands and it's going to be pretty hard to recover from that. We're going to click on OK because we verified that this is 0D46J, not 2D47J. So we're prompted now, please connect the EWS module to the port and make sure, again, it's telling you that the MCU is a 0D46J. And the data is being read. Now you're going to get the dump or the read, and you always want to save it in case you ever have any problems. You want to go back to it. And if you notice here, the file name that's populated is the VIN of the vehicle, along with the mask of the device, plus the date that we read it. And then I would usually put some additional information here, and I would put the customer's name, and uh, I might even put uh, the the bidding for the mechanical key, perhaps, if I knew it, or some other specific information that would help me to identify this file later, and then save it in a place where I can find it if I need it. Click on Save. So always, always, always save. Now at this point, we're ready to write a key to this EWS. And the way that that's done is we will put either an EML key, remote headed key like this, into the programmer, or we can do a single 7935 transponder. Either way, it doesn't matter. So in this case, we'll go ahead and show you the EML key. Now back here on the software, we are going to click on write key. So now it's asking us what slot and um, what type of transponder we're using. So as you see, these slots are used and these other slots are new. You can choose whichever slot you want. It makes no difference. Uh, typically choosing number 10 is the best. That way, any of these other keys here, as you see, 6, 7, 8, and 9, if you programmed, uh, say, key number 6 here, and this customer went to the dealer and purchased another key, it would automatically be sent on this key number, which is the first available slot. The dealer keeps track of these things. So if you programmed over key slot 6, the next key the customer got from the dealer wouldn't work. So the nice thing to do is to go to the last key slot, click on that, which is here already selected for us, key, to, key number 10, and it does say use, but that's fine. We're going to write over it. And then we're choosing either an EML key, so that's the remote-headed key that actually charges the internal battery, or a PCF7935. In this case, we're doing the EML, so we're going to click on write key. 
Now it says put the key to the coil, which we've already done. Click on yes. Now this is a writing and verification process that the AK-90 is doing. And interestingly enough, if you do put in the wrong key, if you get your keys confused and put in a CAS key and it looks the same, or you put in a 7936 transponder and it looks the same as a 7935 and you get mixed up, the programmer can tell the difference and will let you know that you put the wrong type of key in the programmer. Okay, so now we got write key OK. And at this point, we don't need to write any data back to the EWS module, we just need to install the EWS module back into the vehicle and then take this key once it's been cut and we want to make sure the battery is fully charged in the vehicle we're working with. We're going to put this key on in the ignition. We're going to turn it on. We're going to leave it on for 30 to 45 seconds. We're going to shut it off. We're going to pull it out of the ignition. We're going to put it back in and start the vehicle. You need to do this in order to get the key fully synchronized with the vehicle. So if you just try to start the car right away, it might start. But you're better off to put the key in, the ignition, turn it on, wait 30 to 45 seconds, turn it off, remove the key, put it back in, and then start the vehicle. So that's a brief overview of software installation for the AK-90 and then reading the data out of an EWS3 module and preparing a key to start that vehicle. So if you have any questions or anything else that you'd like to know about this particular device or any other devices that we sell, please give us a call or send us an email. We'd be happy to help you. And again, thank you for watching another video brought to you by International Key Supply.